so we're here today to talk about UCAS applications and the do's and don'ts of those applications. So um, really best if you could give us a little intro and tell us a little bit about yourselves. Yes, yeah, should I go first, Rich? Yeah, <laughs> um, why not? Yeah. So I'm Beth. Um, I am originally from County Durham in the northeast of England, um, and I'm currently studying veterinary medicine at the Royal Veterinary College. Um, I'm in my fourth year, um, so I've got one more year to go after the, this, so a total of five years. Um, really enjoying it. A bit tired at the moment because I've just sat some exams, so I all know what it feels like to be looking forward to the Christmas holidays. Yeah. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And uh, yeah, thank you for that, Beth, and especially thanks for, for helping out uh, today. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Richard Evans, and I am the International Student Recruitment Manager here at the RVC. Um, a little bit about my backstory. So I was sort of grew up in, um, born in Leeds, but grew up in Cambridge. I then went to Manchester Metropolitan University to do a, an acting degree. Um, I then got a job in admissions at Manchester Met. And then I moved down to uh, to London to work for the Royal Veterinary College, and I've been here for like the last nine years. So I've been working quite a long time in sort of um, university recruitment and the admissions department. So yeah, it's a real pleasure to be chatting to you today, and uh, we look forward to answering any questions that you guys have got. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and I think your career as well, Rich, is a great example of like using your degree in different jobs and how some degrees can have really brilliant like transferable skills. I think that's a really yeah, good that's time. a really it's a really good point, uh, Emma. So I remember when I first started telling my mates at sixth form that I was going to do an acting degree, and they were like, well, "Why are you going to pretend to be a tree for three years?" And uh, <laughs> and but to be honest, it was that I don't regret any of it. It was an absolutely incredible three years. I was doing something that I, I loved, something that I was really passionate about. And to be honest, it was those skills that actually led me to the career that I'm in now. So often I will be, um, you know, well, quite fortunately, I, you know, I can sort of travel the world and do presentations sometimes to, you know, crowds of five, six hundred people. And, and I and I wouldn't have probably been able to have done that so easily without, you know, the sort of training that I had at uni. So, you know, obviously this is a really sort of a daunting period of your life and you feel like, you know, you've got to make so many different different decisions, but actually, you know, there is, as, as Emma said, there are so many different skills that you can take from from one degree and, you know, you might not end up getting a job in that and that is absolutely fine, but um, but still per, pursue it indeed. It's a bit different to Beth because I, I, Beth, of course, you're doing something that is so, so specific and yeah. I'm sure you're going to make a fine vet. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fingers crossed. Well, absolutely. I'm sure you will. But, you know, if you don't, if you if you don't fancy being a vet, you could apply that to many, many different careers. Yeah, I think that's such a point, just university or higher education in general. And um, there's so many different skills you learn within doing one thing. Um, and I mean, even from what being at university, I feel confident talking and leading groups, which mm -hmm. is something that I've developed completely unrelated to veterinary, but will help me in other situations as well as my working life as a vet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's um we're going to go on now actually to talk about choosing your degree and I think that you've both made really good points there about how and I think that you can choose something that you enjoy you can choose something you're passionate about and it might be the thing you want to focus on at the time but it doesn't mean that just because you're choosing something you want to study for three years that doesn't mean you're then committed to doing that job or working in that area for the rest of your life I think of it as like a, a first step so I know it seems really daunting to choose you know make this huge decision but choose the next the next step or the first step and it doesn't have to be your your last one you might end up somewhere else yeah absolutely so um what do you think are some kind of some top tips for when you're choosing your degree what do you think it's important to consider choosing a degree or choosing a subject um i think for me um i was i'm quite unusual in the world of um, veterinary students in the sense that i never wanted to be a vet from a very young age. I always mm. loved animals, um, but I um, always talked about joining the police force. Um, I spent quite a lot of time in Spain in the summer holidays, so I learned Spanish and there was talks of doing Spanish. Um, and I come from a family of teachers, so that was quite a big influence in my life. Um, mm. But 
I think the key thing is to find something that your interests lie quite deeply in and that you can see yourself doing. And yes, take opinions from everyone else. Ask everyone else where they think your strengths lie. But at the end of the day, you're the one that has to sit um, in the library and learn all the information and wake up really like you want to put some effort into what you're doing. And I find, especially doing a degree that like veterinary where um, it can be quite competitive and it is vocational. So you end up being a vet, you end up with a kind of a job title as such. Um, mm -hmm. People will always say that's really hard and um, what are you going to do if it doesn't work out? And I think it's something that you have to consider. But um, I do really think that you have to go with your gut and yes, mm -hmm. use other people's opinions, but don't be afraid to kind of um, use your own head and, and your heart as well. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I think that's a really good point you've made about you're the person who's going to need to go to the lectures, do the essays, do the practical, whatever it might be that you, whatever way you're going to be studying, you're the person doing that. So your opinion is probably the most important one to consider there. Um, do you think it's important to think about how you study? Do you think it's important to research that when you're looking at a degree? Is that an aspect you think that's important? Yeah, um, for me personally, definitely, because um, I was aware that there are only a select number of veterinary schools within the UK that I could choose from. Um, and I was aware that there's always going to be an element of sitting down and learning. Um, I don't think you can ever really get fully away from that. But I think the, the facilities that can be offered to you, the people that can be teaching you um, and the way in which they um, want to kind of um, bring across their teaching style, whether or not there'll be a lot of one on one contact or whether or not you'll be sent away to learn which is not necessarily a bad thing and it does work in some degrees you might have to do more independent study and um, I do think it's really important for me I wanted to be able to be involved with animals um, from the get-go and at RVC we're lucky enough to have a farm so even though I lived in central London for two years I was still able to see animals and learn hands-on alongside um, some of the more um, traditional rote learning that we have to do yeah so yeah yeah. yeah and just to back up what uh, beth was saying there so actually there, there are there are quite a few a lot of websites out there that kind of break down how much uh like teaching you have where i think it might be uni stats is a, a good resource for students to check out um and just to sort of follow on those points i think what you also have to consider is is quite frankly where you want to be where do you want to, to to live for three years because you know you could love the course and love the program but if you you know if you if you don't enjoy the town or the city where you're living um then you know that can really sort of um dampen or even ruin sometimes the, ex the student experience that you're going to have so i think one of the first decisions you've got to kind of think about is do you want to live at home and commute to a more sort of local you know university or are you willing to to move away and if you are willing to move away would you prefer to be in a more sort of campus-based environment or or are, or do you want to go to a big city and experience you know the hustle and bustle of city life great night life you know just just the the chaos the chaos the beautiful chaos that you know cities can offer so I think that's probably uh, one of the first decisions that you've got to make. You're actually quite lucky being in sort of South Essex. You've got some really great universities around you, whether that be obviously Essex, East Anglia or East, East London and, and obviously a lot of the other London universities that are you know relatively close to you. But yeah, really sort of work out how far you want to be away from home. And also you've got to think about, um, and that sort of ties in with finance as well, because if you are going to move away from home, then you are, you know, you will be living in student accommodation typically for the first year and then living in a, a student house, which which I know Beth is uh, right now. And obviously that is going to accrue, you know, uh, add to your sort of debt that you willing to take on. So, so you've got to sort of really think about those questions. And then when you have look at the uh, the universities that offer that course yeah it's a combination isn't it sorry beth you, no, you go first i was gonna say and you yourself have to make that decision because a lot of my friends um stayed at home so i'm really close to 
Durham University and Newcastle Universities and they um, stayed at home and they loved it as though for me my um, mum had moved away for university and she did um, influence me a lot to move away and kind of start some sort of independence but looking back had I had the opportunity to opportunity to stay at home there's definitely pros and cons of both and only you can really make the decision of which mm -hmm. outweighs the other um because all of these stats yes they are really helpful um but i do think there's kind of a gut feeling as well yeah. between you and whoever's going to be supporting you the most at home um with where kind of your future lies but yeah i think it's really definitely. good point, rich and uh, I think it's also like uh, just backing up what you were saying there, Beth, about it being a, a real personal decision. Um, my cousin, I know he went to Birmingham just because all of his friends from school also went to Birmingham. And when he went there, they kind of stayed within their kind of sixth form bubble. And then by in his own words, they didn't really branch out and meet many more people. And you've got to remember, like, I know it's good, it's such a terrifying thing, your first your first day at uni. I remember getting in my mum and dad's car all them years ago. And uh, it was it was so terrifying because but you've got to remember absolutely everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's looking to form and meet, you know, form friendships and meet new people. So so you'd never get, I mean, uh, can you remember your first day at RVC or first week there? Yeah, most definitely. And it is so scary. Um, you think that you kind of almost put on this persona and then you remember that you've got to go through all of the ups and downs of life and wake till 3 a.m. whether it's because you're socialising or you're trying to cram information in your head and then you realise that actually everyone is in the same boat and quite um, lucky at RVC in that um, because it's such a smaller university there, I think there's a lot less people that travel in groups um, knowing people um, but I know that it's something that does happen at other universities and if you know people that have the same path as, as you that's fine but I definitely agree that it's really key to kind of say yes to everything um, and kind of branch out as much as possible because I don't think there's another time in your life like for me there was no other time in my life where I could justify um, or where I could see myself moving into Camden and um, it's just not something that I could really ever see it's a lot more expensive and um, I have no family down there but just to kind of put on my big sh uh, girl shoes and go was something that I was really glad that I had the opportunity to do and I don't think I'll ever regret that. Yeah I think there's a few just thinking about what you said there's a few things I think to, um, are important there then to when choosing your your uni or your course I think you want to think about what subject you want to study that's really mm -hmm. important how do you like to study um where would you like to study the university um the area do you want to move away or do you want to live at home so it's kind of like four key aspects I think there so there's the course and the subject how do you like to work um and the, the university and I've forgotten the other one <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But I think and I think it's important to remember it is ultimately your decision to make because you will be doing that. And I think if you're not sure about living at home or moving away, you do get five options on UCAS. Make the most of those five options. I would suggest do pick five choices. And if you're not sure, pick a couple that are close to you. Pick three that are away and you could have living at home for a couple of options and living away for the others and you can do it like that and then you can kind of see see what um offers you get and then you might end up with a couple of options to choose between so you're sort of not having to make that final decision when you put your choices in i think that could be really helpful Absolutely. what do you think it's important to know about kind of the application process is there any extra stuff sort of other than the ucas application itself yeah well um I think it's always good to check with so if you're making five choices always check individually uh, with all five choices if there are any sort of extra things that you have to do so I'll give the example from the RVC um, if you're applying for our, our BEFS course the BET Med course um, not only do we ask for a personal statement we now ask for uh, two things we need them to fill out a work experience form and we also need to fill out um, it's called a supplementary questionnaire 
where we ask them three questions about themselves. It's kind of similar to a personal statement in a way, uh, but we ask them three questions and, and we need them to fill those out. Now, we don't necessarily advertise that. We do, we, there is a, we do mention it on, on UCAS, but statistically this year, it's going down every year, but this year 15% of our applicants forgot to fill out both either one or both of those two things. And unfortunately for them, it was an automatic rejection. So if you are doing, uh, if you are whatever course you're applying to, just just double check there isn't anything additional that you need to fill out because you want to make sure that you know that you've got a clean slate with all of them and you don't get an automatic rejection. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you don't want to you don't want to make sort of a relatively simple mistake like that and miss out on an opportunity. So look at each individual uni website. I think and yeah. double check everything. And are you going to have to do an interview as well? You know, will you have to go through an interview afterwards? Will you have to prepare something? Will you have to do an audition for, a, you know, a practical yeah. course or something like that? Did what I interview you, Beth? Yeah, so Rich actually interviewed me and this, um, oh, I don't know where this kind Show of best, <laughs> this best, my age do not. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, a long I don't course. Yeah. know where this kind of best fits into our discussion, um, but I, that visited universities is key and in hindsight um it was something that I think that I could have done more so I have an older sister and um she wanted to do law with Spanish and um she went around all the universities with um mum and dad and I had a weekend job and that was like I needed my money on the weekend so that I could save and I was going to uni um, and I actually didn't really go and look at any universities um, and now doing work like this it makes me realise what a dangerous mistake that was and now it's even better because things are online and I understand that there are lots of things that play into the fact that whether or not you'll be able to visit a university and um, never mind distance and um, other commitments and all the rest but if you can go and figure out, if you can stand in the middle of a university and as cheesy as it sounds, or sit down at an interview table and just think, these are my people, this is where I can imagine having the best five years, three years, four years of my life, then I really do think you get a good feeling. And yeah, Rich interviewed me um, and I had to act out a scene where, um, we were both, I think we were we were peers, we were both at university together. Um, and it was it was probably one of the strangest interviews that I'd ever done. <laughs> and Rich knows it because he does it every year and every year it, it always throws people because it's such a kind of strange experience. But um at the end of it, we were kind of laughing about it and it didn't feel like I'd kind of just handed a bit of my future over to Rich, whether or not I was gonna get into the RVC. Um and through the whole interview experience at the RVC I really felt that like they were trying to get the best out of me and at the same time I was able to see the facilities and um, so if you can get involved follow universities on social media and um, they're on everything the RVC even has Pinterest um, so if you can get a taste of what life at university will be like in particular universities and that's a really good top tip that I would offer to you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think you get a real feel in, and I think you even get this from an online interview. I know I've done online interviews for jobs and you get um, a real feel for the people, for the place. You know, I know it's hard this year, so, you know, try and do a virtual tour, try and, as you said, look at the university's social media. What feeling do you get from them? You can also go on UniBuddy, which is a great site to speak to current students about the courses that they're studying on, get a feel and think, OK, what do I think about, you know, what they're saying to me about the course? What's the feeling I'm getting from this? And really listen to that. I think that can be really, really helpful. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think now that sort of, you know, obviously there's realms of social media. Well, obviously we're watching this through Facebook now and uh, you, you you are really lucky. And, and, and from a university perspective, um, we are investing a lot into our sort of digital resources um, to try. And I mean, we're, we're looking at doing virtual campus tours. Um, Beth, actually, this is something I'll probably ask you to do, actually. So you'll probably have to walk around with an <laughs> iPad and then say, oh, this is the gym. This is, you know, 
so I know it's nothing will ever, ever be actually stepping inside, you know, a, an institution, but, you know, we really are trying sort of the, the best next case scenario. So, um, yeah.